are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Thanks for tuning in to Weha Mag. My name is Tom Hickey. I'm with West Hartford Magazine, Weha.com, and hashtag Weha Events, uh, <laughs> new in 2017. Uh, I'm joined today, as we always are on a monthly basis, by representatives from the business associations throughout uh, the town of West Hartford. Uh, I'm sure we'll scan over at some point today to the map to remind you who those business associations are. But we will work our way right around uh, the table today and allow them to introduce themselves. And then I'm going to jump on a uh, little introduction of, of some new special guests that we have today, which is only the second time that we have done this. We had a special guest about six months or so ago. Uh, so. Uh, we're, you know, we're still getting the kinks out, but hopefully this will work really, really well. <laughs> so let's start with my left, your right, and we're joined by Hank. Hi, Hi. I'm Hank Cleary, and I'm here on behalf of the Elmwood Business Association. I'm a less an active member of the Elmwood Business Association than I am a, an Elmwoodian, but uh, I'm on a lot of different levels. Uh, Dr. Rick Liftig, who's kind of the, the stabilizing and motivating influence for the Elmwood Business Association asked me if I'd come in here and represent that today, and I'm pleased to be doing that. We're Thanks. pleased to have you. Thanks for joining us. Great. And I'm Tracy Flater, co-president of the Park Road Association. And I'm Ronnie Newton. I'm the editor of WeHa.com. I'm Jeanette Dardenne, and I'm one of the founders of Eaton Connecticut Marketing. I'm Kristen Fritz, and I am Jeanette's co-founder of Eaton Connecticut Marketing. So we are going to start with our, <laughs> with our special guests. Uh, again, only the second sure. time that we've had special guests. And these special guests actually brought food. Mm -hmm. uh, but we before did. we do anything, so it does smell great. I know. Don't you wish everyone, <laughs> and, and everyone had that aroma? It's lunchtime. Yeah. We may, <laughs> we may actually eat. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, so please, as, as we're talking, and Ronnie, if you want to get them started, mm -hmm. you know, sure. dish some up and, uh, and enjoy. But uh, the one thing that everyone's going to ask, and I will admit that uh, my goodness, now probably eight months or so ago, uh, prior to uh, my reason for saying hashtag Weha events is because we were doing more and more uh, events uh, in West Hartford and um, I had never uh, heard of or met Eda in Connecticut and mm -hmm. we met and we kicked off the taste of Blue yeah, back funny. and the center uh, right. together. Yeah. Um, and I'll give them a little commercial plug, even though we're not supposed to. But the only thing that we did differently uh, was use them um, to help market and get the word out about the event. And not only did we sell out, but we actually turned away 150 people uh, to that event. So it was wildly successful. Mm -hmm. And we have been working with them ever since. Yep. But to our, our other residents and readers and in, in, uh, sorry, listeners uh, <laughs> in West Hartford who don't know uh, who you are and what mm -hmm. you do every day, if you could just tell us, you know, what is Eden Connecticut? I think that'd be a great place Absolutely. to start. Sure. So we started out as a Facebook group. So if you're on social media, if you go to Facebook, um, Eat in Connecticut, and it's really a collective group um, for people to come in. It's chefs, restaurateurs, um, bars, farms, and uh, they come in and they post about their restaurants. And it's fantastic, you know, whatever they have going on, whether it's specials, um, maybe they're having a celebration of some sort. Um, they can all post in there. And then it's for the general community to go in there mm -hmm. and participate. So a lot of times we'll have questions like, uh, what's the best Indian restaurant to go to in the northeast corner? Um, you know, I'm celebrating my 21st wedding anniversary. Where should I go out to dinner? Mm -hmm. um, or it's not just West Hartford. It's not just or West Hartford. Hartford. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Great point, Ronnie. Thank you. It's all over Connecticut. So um, we have now almost, I think, five or 6,000 members, which is 
awesome. Um, so that's how we started out. And then we uh, started to form an agency. So it's Eaton Connecticut, um, and we're a marketing communications firm. And we work with small businesses with an emphasis on food and drink clients. And we help them with all of their marketing. So it's strategic marketing, it's social media, it's public relations, it's helping them with events. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and it's Eat in CT, right? Eat, eat in, in Connecticut, in Connecticut. or hashtag Eat in CT. I think I got it. Right. Yep. Mm. So we do offer public relations services. We offer professional photography services. And what's interesting, I think, about us is that we met when, like six years ago, and we all had very similar backgrounds in marketing and PR and social media. And we always joked about one day forming this agency. And sure enough, Jeanette starts this Eat in Connecticut Facebook group about two years ago now. Yeah. It completely took off. Yeah, it up. established crazy. this tight foodie community as a place where people can go and connect between patrons and chefs and in restaurant tours. Everybody to get on the same page and just have this sense of community. Yeah. And as that grew, we saw that there truly was a need for somebody to tell the stories, these inside stories, the backstories to these restaurants. Yeah. So we pulled our expertise together and we have over 30 years of combined experience in PR and marketing and social media storytelling. And, and with West Hartford being a food mecca, right? It, it is. You it you is know, it such happens. a destination yeah. for food. It right. It's yeah. such a great place to have something like this because yeah. not only are you um, writing or, or sharing the stories of the West Hartford restaurants, but most, mm -hmm. most chefs, if they're operating anywhere in this area, anyway, got their start working for one of the, you know, kind of one of the big name yeah. um, restaurant groups that is headquartered here in mm -hmm. West Hartford. And then people really look to West Hartford as kind of the center of the, the food universe, at least in You're absolutely right. There is yeah. part of the It state. is truly a destination for foodies. And we are so lucky and blessed to be working with some incredible clients. And to watch all of this grow just out of a community need, <laughs> pretty fun. It's great. I mean, one of the one of the big things about Eaton Connecticut is we have so many restaurateurs that come up to us and tell us that their business has grown because of what we do. Mm -hmm. And that makes us feel so amazing, you know, where someone can go to a restaurant and share their wonderful experience that they had and then my gosh, the world is their oyster. So many people get to view it. It's fantastic. Well, I remember, and, and I'll let you speak to the food from, uh, from India, but we, uh, last show we were talking about the pop-up store uh, the week before oh, yes. Christmas and Hanukkah, and that was the week that India had their opening. And yes. I remember you guys saying, oh yeah, we're gonna have an opening. And I said, well, how many people? And I, I think you said, nah, no, 50, 60. You know, it was, and it was some insane number of people. Mass, you know, yeah. Double that or more, <laughs> you know, all of it. So, you know, people do pay attention and they are following, yeah. you know, and taking your advice, you know, or your suggestions. So I think that's only been helpful to, you know, the events that we've been doing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. as well and helping raise the bar, you know, and all of that. Because the worst thing you can do is have an event and, you know, you, you hate to hear, oh, I didn't know, you know, oh, I wish I knew, right. <laughs> you know, whatever right. it was. So uh, you've been instrumental in helping us with that. Well, in yeah. India, particularly, and that's, that's the food we have here, uh, yeah. which yes. smells so wonderful, came from India. But... Um, Chef mm -hmm. Chernamula mm -hmm. came from Fairfield County. And, yes, and correct. I know when yes. I talked to him, he was a little hesitant about moving into this marketplace, mm -hmm. but I guess you've been, feel like you've, you know, been very yeah. successful in helping him mm -hmm. really, you know, just immediately he's, he's, he's been a so huge embraced. part of the yeah. scene. And he's, of course, just a wonderful man he as is. well. And he Jim is. had the, that Such kind of warm person personality right yeah but yes. it's it's great so we decided to bring some of his takeout food today so that we could all enjoy it yeah. and we <laughs> wanted people to, to start see start try some that yeah. India does offer these um, lunch boxes they're called and they're only available at lunch right yeah. and you can get um, we have chicken tikka, tikka masala and we the other one was the chicken, chicken gassi. gassi but all of their food is fantastic they have um, a plethora of options from vegan and gluten-free and vegetarian and um, one thing that's interesting that Prasad does is that he incorporates Indian street food into his menu and the, the creations that he comes up with. He is truly, he's an artist. Yes. Unbelievable chef. Looks and amazing and looks tastes amazing. Tastes even better, yeah. I agree. Right. So, you, so I want to make sure you mention 86. We do, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we see that hat there. Yeah. Too. In addition to the agency, um, a lot of um, restaurants will come to us, like Jeanette said, to sort of promote their events. And recently, Scott Miller teamed up with us, Scott Miller of the Doro Restaurant Group 
came to us with an idea. For those idea. who don't know, what's the Dora Restaurant Group? So they own Aver, Trava, and then the soon-to-be-open Zohara. Mm -hmm. So Scott Miller came to us with an idea to pull together a culinary chef battle where we have 16 chefs who are going to battle it out in eight rounds. We have two chefs who battle it out at one time, and we have already had our first culinary competition. The event, we're calling it 86 A Culinary Collision. So the first one was completely sold out. People were trying to sneak in the back door. It was held at Savoy. <laughs> it was incredible. It was off the charts. It was an incredible event. It was um, a Monday night. It's a Monday, Monday night, night at 10 p.m. So at 10 o'clock at night. At 10 p.m. And it's a 1 a.m. house. And it goes to raise funds for End Hunger Connecticut. Yeah, that's great. That's and there's some symbolism behind the 86, right? Absolutely. It's to 86 someone out. That you're, yeah. that you're out. <laughs> Just like in a restaurant, like right. Roddy, yeah. you talked about the article. Yeah. When you nick something off the menu, it's 86, yeah, it's out. So our next battle is coming up on Monday the 6th at yeah. a location to be announced soon. And there's another one on March 20th. On yep, March 20th it'll be on March as well. 20th as well. So you can, you can go to um, 86thculinarycollision.com to find out more info. Yeah. And, and by design, they pop up. You don't tell people in advance. Yes. That's part of the whole. You just tell the date. Just exactly. tell the date. Yep. And you don't know who the chefs are. There's a lot of mystery because people don't know where it is or who right. the, chefs the chefs are. are. But then also the chefs, when they find out that they're going to be participating, they need to create their their um, food with some mystery ingredients. Yes, three yeah. mystery yeah. ingredients. And the mystery ingredients last time were some pretty <gasps> interesting <laughs> items. Like a parrotfish. Parrotfish and a, a, a mallard a, duck breast. Yeah, mallard duck breast. With a sauce, which I can't and, remember and a what soy, it was. Like a yeah. soy sauce, a balsamic soy, yeah. which that one seemed pretty ordinary yeah. and not too hard to incorporate. But, but the they really came up with some some really interesting dinners. You'd probably hate it, Tom, because I know that you, <laughs> you don't like yes. a lot of odd food. But, <laughs> but I loved it. Well, I actually... So I'm staying the furthest yeah. away from the food. <laughs> when the location is announced, it's on Eat in Connecticut on the Facebook page. It right? is, You can find yeah. out there, because yeah. I know that's where I saw it last time. Yeah. 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 And there is also a Facebook page created for Just 86, for that. a yeah, culinary so collision as well. Yeah. Is there a favorite story um, from when you did a new restaurant opening or you worked with a chef, something that was just really different and unique? I know I'm putting you on the spot oh, a little that's bit. that's okay. But, that's fun. Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is when they tell us that they have guests who come in who um, are so excited to now try out a new restaurant. Um, we have a restaurant that we work with that caters to individuals who are um, sensitive to gluten-free, or excuse me, uh, to uh, gluten-free gluten items. Gluten-free and vegan. And Absolutely. They're, and, um, they're over in Simsbury, and they're a fantastic restaurant, extremely yeah. talented chefs behind there, and it's just so enjoyable to to hear the feedback that we're getting from our clients and yeah. the community in general and just saying thank you for letting us know about the stories behind these restaurants right. and these brands. Yeah. Well, Hank, I'll tell you, um, we had, I don't know when it was, uh, depending on when this aired, but it was in February, first Thursday of February, and we uh, used the expertise of Eating Connecticut to help us with the taste of Elmwood. Uh, and not only did we have the largest number of restaurants um, participate, but the food was just was, brought to a yeah. whole different level. It was just it's absolutely, you really, I say now, it's like you don't even go to a tasting, it's really nine dinners. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, it's like nine meals. Oh, the you, restaurants did phenomenal. Amazing, you know, yeah. uh, so we thank you for that. That's great, it's helped us, you know, raise the bar and get the yeah. community excited, you know, about thank what we're you. doing too. Oh, we love working great. with you. I know, so. we do, we have so much fun with you guys. Okay. <laughs> Lots of good Wonderful. stuff to come. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. For all of you, um, uh, please uh, Google them or go to Facebook for Eating Connecticut uh, so you can learn even more about them. Uh, come to any of our events, um, you know, uh, any of the Taste of events. Um, on behalf of the Taste of Bishop's Corner, uh, that's the next one that we're yeah. doing, which is the last Wednesday of March, March mm -hmm. 29th, without... Is that 29th, correct yeah. on that flyer, yeah. March 29th. Um, and years. that is actually going to be at a location to be determined, uh, which is sort of exciting too. So everyone's just sort of popping up all over the place <laughs> with, yes. these, uh, with these different events. Right. So. People in West Hartford don't plan far in advance anyway. So. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> fine. Just, fine. just, just tell them where to show up, right? Yeah, That's show all it is. So. And be happy. Uh, well, thank you so much. And, and please, someone sample uh, India so you can go back and tell them how wonderful yes, it was. Yes, <laughs> right. Where is India located? Oh, great question, Hank. It's in Blueback Square. Oh, okay. It's actually uh, right next to where the new hotel will be opening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Great. Great. 
All right. Well, thanks again and enjoy. Thank your, you. Everyone go eat out and, and check out Evening <laughs> Connecticut and they'll tell you, I was going to say they'll tell you where to go, but they'll tell you where to dine. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> they'll tell you where the dining experience should be. Yeah. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. Well, it was so great to have Eden Connecticut here. So, Ronnie, you still have a plateful. So, it how, was because, how is India? Because I, I talked them into leaving me with some because <laughs> I, I was looking at it and I was smelling it and it smelled so good that I, my stomach was actually growling. I'm glad that, you know, hopefully people didn't catch that on the air. But <laughs> it is it is absolutely delicious. Very so, tasty. Um, the you know lentils and sweet potatoes and the tiki masala and the chicken. I think it was gassi. And I haven't broken into the naan yet, but I can tell that that's going to be awesome, too. So, that's good. so I'll keep yeah. eating while, you keep, know, keep while eating. everybody else talks. Keep so. eating. We're going to let Hank give a little uh, mm -hmm. introduction to Elmwood. Um, uh, right? <laughs> Just, uh, Elmwood 101. You, you go, El Elmwood 101, absolutely. And we, then we'll ask you some, some key questions as well. But. Well, uh, you know, forgive me if to, for wandering awkwardly into the topic, but the... Uh, I don't represent a particular business in mm -hmm. Elmwood. I have a business in Elmwood, but it's you know a couple of pieces of paper on my desk in a spare room of the house. But <laughs> thus my interest in the Elmwood Business Association or involvement in it. But uh, I've known Elmwood for many years, and I've known it as a transplant. You know, Elmwood is a very very stable community in many ways. Uh, and interestingly to me is that when I first came to Central Connecticut in the uh, middle 1970s. The first place I knew was my sister-in-law's house in Bristol, and the next thing I knew was Brock's in Elwood. And I'm wondering Brock's, why not even Brock's. how many That's people right. remember Brock's. Yeah. It's since been part of the grand and ongoing evolution of, uh, of Elmwood. But uh, I was thinking the about Corner of South Main and New Britain Avenue, Corner right? of South Main and New Britain Avenue. I think and so, if yeah. you think of that geography, it's interesting that while Brock's is gone, the balance remains because the corner pug down on the corner of New Park. Is it New Park or yeah, New, Park. New, New Park in New Britain? Yeah. Is almost uh, a, a polarity juxtaposed with, mm. with Brock's. It's mm. on the opposite corner, opposite end of the center of Elmwood. And that got me thinking, you know, you're talking about um, the ladies from, from the uh, food service uh, promotional uh, uh, business. <clears throat> We're talking about the uh, specialties, the interests in, in food these days, the gluten-free and the vegan and all of that stuff. And as I was considering what I've known, what I've known of Elmwood or how I've observed Elmwood in the last 45 years is that it is basically organic. It's a very organic place. And nothing about it has been connived up. Uh, nothing about it has been uh, pushed home. I don't particularly get involved in the, uh, you know, the political or infrastructural choices that are made. I'll squawk about them once in a while, but that's only a privilege of living there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I live, my wife, good, prud good wife Prudence and myself, we live in the middle of the urban maelstrom in a 200-year-old farmhouse, okay. you know, and I think that that in itself kind of represents the the, the uh, variety, mm -hmm. the variety mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. there is in Elmwood. Mm -hmm. And it's all happened quite spontaneously. Mm -hmm. uh, and I look and I say, you know, you couldn't plan this. Recent weeks, just anticipating this discussion today, I'm thinking that within a couple of hundred yards, no more of one another, in Elmwood, you've got two pharmacies, a senior center, municipal senior center, mm -hmm. uh, two churches, a law firm that specializes in trusts and estate planning and elder law services, a company that is involved in a multiplicity of elder care services, the Juniper House organization, oh, yeah. a funeral home, I sit, two churches, and it's all right there for me when I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little theme there. But you also have a lot of restaurants, and you have um, yeah, Jerry's Artorama, which is really a regional destination for artists. It is, yeah. and, uh, and to top off the other theme, right down the block, there's a fortune teller and an insurance business right next door to each other. Talk about convenient. <laughs> <laughs> but Ronnie, it did occur to me that one of the advantages, one of the supportive things about that is that Elmwood, when you think about it, is the most accessible part of West Hartford. Mm -hmm. Right, it's very accessible to the to the highway <coughs> to 84 from uh, 
three, both ends. Three, three or four exits. Right. Exits. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it was one of the first areas in central Connecticut and Greater Hartford that I came to know. I worked at Channel 30 for a lot of years, so it was the office's neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Shirts done, you know, beers drunk, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. things bought. Just the, yeah. the, the Still the is stuff their neighborhood. Of, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> stuff of daily life. Yeah. And at the same time, now having mentioned where we live, in one and a half blocks, three of the most venerable, old, historic homes in West Hartford are right there. Right. You got the Sarah Whitman house. Mm -hmm. You've got our house, which is the site of the uh, old Goodwin pottery business. Wow. First business in West Hartford. Mm -hmm. And a privately owned home that was a, a business center on what uh, is now Beachland Park that was moved up onto New Britain Avenue. Mm -hmm. So and I don't think I ever told you this. When I first got married, we mm -hmm. lived in, in one of the townhouse condominiums oh, really? that are in your complex. You did tell me <laughs> that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, yeah, I loved it. And uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, also thinking, having come here today to do this, and I'm really, really, really pleased at the opportunity to, you know, share my perceptions. We record, of course, here in the studios in West Hartford Town Hall, and you reminded me, the last time I was in West Hartford Town Hall, I was here one day, same day, a couple of hours, and I got a marriage license, and I registered as a Republican. And somehow or other, shortly thereafter, I thought maybe I'm never going to go back there again. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, just, that's just too complicated. But I'm very fond of Elmwood. It's uh, got a lot of variety. I was in the process of creating a, a, an image for myself as an Elmwood legend because I can't tell you how often people all over town tell me, well, I saw you and I was the skinny little old white guy walking the little white dog with the skinny black leash. And we were up and down and in and out of most of the neighborhoods in town, but certainly mostly Elmwood. So uh, I think Elmwood has uh, got a lot of new things. I was reminded of Yogi Berra the other day when, I guess it was uh, Monday, the, the uh, President's Day holiday, and we said, ooh, Chick-fil-A, you know, is brand new. And as Yogi said, uh, you know, that place is, nobody goes there anymore because it's always too crowded. <laughs> and it was just astonishing trying to get next to Chick-fil-A, yes. but yep. I think it's yep. on my schedule for this week. <laughs> there it you calms go. down just a little bit. Yeah, it's fast and, food, uh, but it's it's really good. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really I'm good. To and, it. and a great owner too. I was going to say he's Already been really himself into the community. Wonderful so far. And, and we've got a. I'm not sure of the name of the business, but it's new and just about to open, as I understand it. Golf Tech. Golf Tech. Yeah, yep, Golf right Tech. And, and that's a uh, West Hartford family opening it, yeah. um, a franchise of that business. And they've promised they're going to teach me how to play golf. There you go. <laughs> it will really be a joke. Uh, well, well, after struggling with golf for 50 years, I thought maybe I had conceded my last putt. But I'm thinking maybe Golf Tech could revitalize Oh, yeah. They say they had a booth at Taste of Elmwood, and the Sousa family mm -hmm. uh, uh, owns it. And they said that no matter if you are a seasoned pro, you know, they will uh, help your game improve. If you've never, you know, played before, they will show you, they'll get you started the right way. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would love to do, and we're going to come back to Elmwood uh, in a second, I'd love to hear a little bit about what's happening on Park Road uh, sure. as well, Tracy, if you wouldn't mind, and then we'll sort of pull it all together. Well, there's always something happening, and it's hard to keep up with what's happening and what's changing. Um, but we do have the park, the parkroadct.com website. So I really and the and the Facebook page. So um, I would encourage everyone to keep checking, you know, both of those places for for more and more updates. Um, very exciting news that Zest is back open, yeah. and I've been up to have lunch a couple of times since they've reopened, and people are really figuring that out quickly. And it's crowded, um, which is great. Refresh my memory. On the, is that affiliated? It is owned by the Pond House. Oh, I thought, I'm yep. really sure. Okay, yep. So, so uh, Lewis and Great. Kim of the Pond House um, own Zest 280, and they're now a, a, a mission-based um, eatery. So they're. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I wow. know, Ronnie, you, you didn't read I'm our sorry, story. Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that part. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're actually working to to help um, bring people back into the workforce. Um, a reentry many, program. Many of them are people mm. who've been um, incarcerated. incarcated. Yeah. But they're they're training them in the um, culinary arts, and I think they're working. They go through the Billings, Billings Forge, Forge program, and then the next phase is to go out into the workforce to certified locations. And I know that um, when Zest was closed, that was one of the things that they were working on is to gain their certification. Awesome. And so um, they're sort of like the second step in the reentry process. And there's a woman who's working there now who who went through the Billings Forge. 
program right. and, and on her own had, had, um, had turned into a success and now she's come back and is helping train others. In yeah, that it's great. It doesn't get much really, better than that. And really, the food is really yeah. good, too. The food, it's, and it's yeah. all pretty much the same. The menu hasn't mm. changed from when they closed, which mm. was a menu that we all loved. So. And, and where is Zest exactly? Zest 280 is on Park Road. Just Two, a, just 280 Park Road, actually. 280 Park Road, as a matter of fact. Yes, yeah. yes. Not too far down the street from the yeah. Playhouse. Oh, so. I'd say next to yeah. Edible Arrangements. That's oh, all yes. I tell people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, and yeah. it's it's just a small cafe open just for lunch right mm -hmm. now. But mm -hmm. I think they do aspire eventually to open for dinner, um, which and would be great. And they do take too. And they do lots of takeout and some catering. So um, it's yummy. Definitely, definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Park and Oak has been doing really well, receiving rave reviews. But now they're also open for lunch, which is exciting mm -hmm. because that was a void for a little bit. People mm -hmm. were hoping, and and um, again, I was in there not too long ago, and it was very crowded. So I think people are mm -hmm. discovering that they're open. Um, very quickly and uh, the prospect is going to start a jazz series um, the second and fourth Tuesday of the month uh, with live jazz music a sort of speakeasy I think it's actually is it I think it's the first and third first and third first okay and third. sorry yeah. Go to the website. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, but I, I yeah. put it in my business story. buzz column, yeah. and, and so I, yeah. I just no, typed it. Very exciting. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, the Playhouse always has something going on. Mm -hmm. So in March, we have a St. Patty's Day on Park. St. Patty's on Park fundraiser for the theater on St. Patrick's Day, which will mm -hmm. have um, whiskey taste tasting by, and Irish cream tasting um, provided by Parkview Wine and Spirits. And then mm -hmm. there'll be music and prizes and trivia and Irish sing-alongs and uh, hearty, hearty finger foods provided by local restaurants. So that'll be happening. And then Stop Time Dance Theater opens up at the end of March, which is always a very popular performance for us. And oh, that's ama uh, they're amazing. They're amazing. They and summer programs, we're registering for summer programs now, so that seems to be the, the happening thing at the moment. Um, but one of the things I wanted to mention is that we have our business meetings and we always, you know, sort of put a summary together and we let the people know on our, you know, Park Road Association distribution list what's happening and maybe on our website. But one thing that they you did it in Elmwood and, and I know that this was Rick's doing was he took his notes and he put them on Friends and Neighbors of West Hartford. And and it was so interesting because I don't think the general community understands that our business meetings are attended by, you know, representatives of all the different departments in the town mm. and it's a chance to hear what's going on from the police and the fire and the health mm. department and um, and it's also a chance to share your concerns or ask questions and I think that when we're telling you know our association members all the time they sort of know but it's hard to broaden that loop so mm. it was it was kind of a great well, idea uh, an another cute experience that occurred to me uh, and, and the police department particularly highly visible and very very mm -hmm. informative when they come to our meetings and a couple of summers ago, being the old guy walking the little dog, I'm walking up New Britain Avenue now. I think I am probably the least interesting human being imaginable to a police <laughs> officer. But I'm walking up and I sense this police vehicle coming alongside me. And I became increasingly conscious of his presence, including his looping around the condo development and catching up with me. And I'm thinking, what have I done? What could he be interested in me about? And when I finally looked over, he pulled out his cell phone and he said, look, I got the same kind of dog. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. That's fantastic. That's great. So that there's great. much to be said for the neighborhood, the neighborhoods. Well, now you're going to have to guy. share a picture of your dog. Yeah, what so kind of, what kind of dog? It. Absolutely. He's dead now. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> that just what, happened then, right? But he did. The, the, yeah. The poor little guy, I loved him dearly, and he's only been gone about six weeks, and we're heartbroken, oh. and we are entertaining alternatives, even All as right. we speak. Well, we'll stay tuned, because once again, what am I going to say? We're out of time. <laughs> so uh, I don't know where 30 minutes goes, but we think we have so much time. Maybe it was the eating this time. Right. I don't know, Ryan. It doesn't look like you finished very much. No, now, I didn't. I'm waiting till right. we're, we're off we're camera to finish. <laughs> <laughs> we're all done. You want to see me? Well, in, in the meantime, please uh, take the opportunity to check out um, parkroadct.com yes. uh, and uh, Facebook for Elmwood Business Association, correct? So. Um, so you can learn all about them. And I was thinking as they were talking, Ronnie, probably not a bad idea for us to figure out a way to get all of that also onto weha.com. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, everyone uh, has access uh, to that information. So uh, stay tuned. In the meantime, in the, in the spirit of Eating Connecticut, how we started, um, everyone go out to eat, <laughs> you know, which is sort of what everyone does yep. in town anyway. Oh, uh, and, uh, and we'll be talking to you next month when we'll have some, well, we've had some beautiful spring weather uh, already. So hopefully in the month of April, we will as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Weha Mag. <laughs>